Welcome marketing chefs. I've got something truly special cooking in the Omni Channel oven today. Marketing Kitchen TV Q&A Live Part 3 of 3. You ask the question about all things related to the A, B, C, D, M hits. What does that stand for? I will be answering your questions about advertising, branding, communications, digital, and marketing. And what do the hits stand for? Hyperconnected, IoT, technology and sales. And I'll answer your questions here today in the Marketing Kitchen TV Q&A Live. Up next in the Marketing Kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen, the marketing kitchen. Hi, I'm Ron Vining, your host of Marketing Kitchen TV. Rather than take the time to do the standalone Q&A like I've been doing, I thought that I would change it up a bit and I would just go through the Twitter feed and answer as many questions as I can. And if the video gets too long, I'll cut it up into two or three different videos. Welcome back to another episode of Marketing Kitchen TV Q&A Live. And what I mean by live is that this should run without edits, or at least with just a few tweaks here and there, just for flow. The reason why I'm going to start doing more videos like this is so that I can actually get them posted. I have a hard drive full of videos that I have recorded, but I don't have the time to edit them, so I haven't put them up to YouTube. They were recorded, so they would be edited. I don't know if you know what I mean, right? So this one, I'm going to record knowing that I'm not going to edit, so the mindset is different. But if you're going to produce a video and create it where you'll have edits, then you record differently. So those videos are sitting on my hard drive. One of these days, I'm going to have the time to edit them. And one of the reasons why I like to edit is, I don't know if you can hear a baby crying outside my kitchen window here. Things just kind of happen when you're recording live, but I've watched a number of YouTube channels where dogs are barking, alarms are going off, people are walking around in the background. So I guess it's, I guess it's all fair game when recording in this style. Uh, for those of you that notice that the background is different, well, actually, if you take a look here uh, where my mouse is pointing, I'm standing right here. And in fact, this picture hasn't been updated because I have my new 34-inch monitor right here, and my laptop is sitting here, monitor sitting here, and I'm standing here. So you're seeing this shot over here of the kitchen. So a little bit different than our usual. But this enables me to do a split screen record and be able to take a look at your Twitter questions here. I really want to apologize that my videos have not been so frequent in the past month and there's a reason for it. Hopefully it's a good reason. So this video is sponsored by myself. Now this is sponsored by a new company that I've started and the name of that company is AppFlix, and it's right here. And AppFlix is you're going to be your streaming entertainment guide, where I'm going to be taking a look at the best of uh, video games, music, and then video in terms of uh, films and series that'll be streaming across all uh, our favorite apps. And some of them are in the picture here, but uh, you know what I mean by apps, right? We're talking about Disney+. Plus. Uh, Netflix, uh, HBO Max coming out soon, CBS All Access. That's for the programming side, so films and TV series. But we'll also be looking at Apple Music and Apple Arcade for music and gaming, looking at Google Stadia and uh, YouTube Music for the Google aspect of that. Um, also, Amazon. Uh, Prime, uh, they have uh, music, they've got Twitch for gaming, etc. So there's a lot of, uh, of apps that are coming out in the streaming space covering gaming, music, and your favorite films and shows. So I thought I'd create a website that focused in on that. So the, my plug will be over in a second. But AppFlix is going to have uh, three key components to it. One is going to be the news 
And so the news is this area here called Cinetaste, where we'll talk about the latest buzz in the industry, things that are popular, and then we'll compare streaming services that are available. Then another section is going to be, uh, well, is Cinejules, where we're going to have forums. That's where there will be a discussion blogs or things similar to, say, like a LinkedIn group, where people can talk about their um, you know, streaming services, programming, etc. Be able to review your favorite content of, again, games, music, and, uh, and video, as well as a best of. And I've decided to build in some gamification here. And just a little quick, uh, Rotten Tomatoes uh, has tomatoes. I've got peppers. So we've got a pepper scale going from cold all the way to spicy. So icy or spicy is how it's going to work on this particular platform. So I think you'll find that fun. And with more gamification, I have a thing called a scorcher scale, which as something is, is trending, so as it's getting spicy, the meter is going to rise. On when, and when content isn't good, it's going to fall in the opposite direction. Anyway, it's a work in progress. Just launched it on November 25th. And the gamification piece, the forums, and the reviews will be up by the middle, hopefully, uh, of December. And then I'll officially launch the site in 2020. All right, enough with the advertisement there. Uh, but thank you for our sponsor which was me. Okay, um, I've invested a lot of time and a lot of money in that. So anyway, there's the plug. Let us uh, take, what I'll probably do with these sessions is answer 15 questions and then uh, stop the video. And then I'll answer another 15 questions and that'll be another video. We'll see how it runs, see how uh, challenging the particular questions are and how long the video runs in doing that. I hope you like this format. Let me know in the comments section and tell me if this worked. Next question. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Rich. I don't know why I wasn't yelling out names earlier, but anyway, I guess sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. 70% of customers say they expect connected experiences with their preferences known across touch points. 70% of customers say they expect connected experiences with their preferences known across touch points. How important are CRM systems in providing a personalized customer experience? Well, just look at Amazon and the data that is collected by uh, first your, potentially your Amazon Prime membership. Uh, so the preferences that you provide them with but even if you didn't do that, your browsing history, your purchase and shipping history, uh, they all have, play into that. Amazon owning things like IMDB and Whole Foods are able to put together two other pieces of the puzzle of who you are as a customer, let's say. Uh, the book titles, that you might read the again like your search queries the reviews you might write all of these things play into with ai a predictive analysis of who you are as a customer so if you want to have connected experience based on your preferences a platform like amazon is able to offer you uh, almost an unparalleled or unrivaled service because of what they've gathered on you. And not just what you've done on their platform or their owned platforms or shared platforms, but by collecting the data from when you enter their site and when you, where you're going when you exit their site. And of course, they're buying third-party data as well. And whether that be potentially from Facebook or Twitter from your credit card. Uh, I mean, if, you've, if you have an Amazon credit card, then they're seeing what you're purchasing and what your habits are outside of the Amazon ecosystem as well too. And of course, with Amazon Prime, they can see your viewing habits, uh, again, for music, 
movies, video games, books, you name it. Uh, so anyway, that's one example. But there are other companies in the same silo or space that are able to achieve the same thing. Apple, Google, Microsoft, uh, just you know, a couple of examples uh, of that. Uh, hotel industry, certainly uh, cruise ship industry, airlines, maybe your Expedia account if, uh, if you have that. Uh, so anyway, those are a couple examples. Do I as a customer like it? I know this isn't your question. Maybe I'm going to ask you, do you like that? Do you want that? Are you in that 70%? I like it to a degree. I don't love it though because yeah, predictive analysis is good to a point, but my behavior is my behavior and I, I might want to change things up every now and then, right? And uh, so I don't want an algorithm pigeonholing me into a specific slot. I want the freedom to be able to be me and to change, to evolve. And I think a lot of customers uh, want that. Oh, I guess I left out Amazon Alexa into that mix as well too. And then Amazon has that Face ID software that they've been selling to law enforcement. Uh, you know, and of course, Google, I probably, Google is probably the, well, U.S. companies, the biggest offender in terms of, of, um, of your privacy or knowing what you will do. Uh, Google claims that they know what you will search for, or what type of day you will search for, uh, based on your past habits. And that's scary to me. But uh, obviously Chinese companies, uh, WeChat, for example, uh, co connected uh, into the uh, government ecosystem of cameras and spying and their social credit score. Huawei connected into that as well, too. But I can't be critical of China when U.S. companies are outright flaunting what they can get away with. Uh, and as much as I disagree with Elizabeth Warren on 99.9% .9 of her platform, I do feel that some of the tech companies need to be shaken up a bit. I'm not advocating that they be broken up, but I think that they need to be given a smackdown in terms of, of how they are abusing their privileges without checks and balances of their customers. But I don't see the U.S. government taking action when it's that same government that uh, testified before Congress saying that they weren't spying when they knew that they were. And that individual is now a analyst or a contributor on a major news network when that person should probably have been fined, censored, or done some jail time for having lied to the American people in Congress under oath. So I don't expect anything to change because money, influence, and power will always rule the day over those of us that don't have that same level of status. And that's unfortunate. But we could always do something about it if we went to the ballot box, but typically we don't. All right, next subject. Sorry for that tangent, but I think it all ties in. Uh, William asks, customer relationship management provides efficient and effective tools to market and sell to prospects, nurture leads, and maintain customer engagement. What is the best CRM system in the industry today? Uh, you, you can't put me in that kind of a position. I ask you guys those questions. Uh, and um, yeah, I, there's so many. I actually, this morning, I, I, I got up super early this morning and uh, I was actually had to, in, in, an exchange with a former MBA student who uh, graduated a couple of years ago 
And we actually had a great talk about data analysis and data storytelling. And we were just, we were just rattling off uh, in the course of the discussion, you know, a handful of companies that were the best in that space. Uh, in terms of CRM management, there's so many uh, systems. I mean, obviously Salesforce comes to mind, Adobe comes to mind. Uh, I get hit with this question all the time. I, I, I can't recommend one over the other because let's go back to what I always talk about. You got your brand, you have your channel, and you have your target audience. And the size of this corporation and what scope its products and services cover, the channels that they will be able to not only engage with uh, their customer or consumers on is a big factor, but also their ability to take the data from those channels it plays into that. And then of course, who is the audience? And so money is an issue, scalability is an issue, and it's really hard for me to answer that question because it really is focused on those three silos and how they, in, they integrate with each other. So I would rather you, based on so your research, tell me who you think are the best. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm actually having a programmer. So for my new um, site, Doing another plug right here. Why not, right? Uh, for my new site, Appflix, it actually is going to have a robust uh, CRM system in there. But because of my custom needs, now we could get an API or a plugin, but my programmer wanted to build it. And so, yeah, I'm letting him build it. And as the site grows, I'll need to tie it into something larger, most likely. But again, that goes into those three silos. Right now, I'm just launching this site. Uh, it, so what we'll build today will suit our needs today, but then that data will, because I chose WordPress as a platform and CSS as the software, it'll be quite easy to tie into some of the larger firms. So if you, you need to be forward looking, depending on the size of your company. If you're starting out, you need to be forward looking about creating something that'll tie into something larger later. If you are a, a larger corporation and you have your own legacy system, you need to bring in someone on your IT staff, if you don't have them already, who will know how to integrate that system into uh, another uh, another turnkey type solution from SAP, Oracle, Salesforce, um, <clears throat> Adobe, etc. Hope that answers your question. Matt asks, it is evident, it is evident the importance of great customer service within a business. <clears throat> Man, I tell you, today is just not my day. Between the tech and my voice <coughs> and knocking things over, ah, it is evident the importance of great customer service within a business. Yes, it, great customer service is necessary for a business. How can companies ensure that their employees are motivated in providing exceptional customer service? That is a good question because that changes the nature of what we've been talking about so far today. And one of the ways is to incentivize good customer service. And well, okay, let me back up one more. It needs to be modeled from the top. So good customer service should be from the top down. Executive leadership, should treat their subordinates well. Because how they treat their subordinates 
sets the tone for how their subordinates will, down the food chain, treat the front line. And the front line are those individuals who are dealing directly with your consumer or your customer, whether it's B2B or B2C. Now, in beyond modeling, beyond uh, appropriate and effective training programs, customer service should be rewarded and or incentivized. There was one organization that I worked for where one of the things that we did was gather all of the customer feedback. Well, we had a rating, obviously customers rated their, or consumers rated their interaction with our call center, as well as sales support, as well as people on the front line. And that all tied into a metric. But we also took in written, we requested both the, uh, we requested from customers, as well as the intake staff, or the front line, to write down accounts of things that were spectacular. Ways that we had gone over and above what we were expected to do for the consumer or for the customer. And what we did was is that we utilized, what I decided to do as a content marketing program, was to utilize those exceptional experiences in a series of, of advertising and all forms of advertising. So whether that had been television, TVC, television commercial, uh, a YouTube video, a case study, a press release, uh, an award, giving a bonus. There were many ways that we made use of, of this program. We also included the customers who are part of this uh, engagement because it, it couldn't have happened without them couldn't have happened without them calling with a, their need or their uh, praise or their criticism. And so by doing this, we set the tone or the standard that exceptional customer service was what our goal or aim was. And uh, by attaching not only recognition from the customer, recognition from their supervisor, recognition from the organization, but also a monetary uh, reward helped to reinforce that behavior. And uh, so anyway, that's just one experience uh, that I had in doing that. And, uh, you know, I think from that answer anyway, you could take multiple pieces away from that and develop your own type of incentivization program. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I hope you enjoyed uh, this segment. I enjoyed talking about customer service, customer experience, B2B and B2C uh, with you with loyalty and rewards. I found this to be a rewarding exchange now that the tech issues seem to be resolved with this format, though it's not what I wanted, at least it's working, and at least I can get a video out to you, unlike uh, what had been happening for the past couple of days. Uh, the reason why, it's not only that I've been super busy working on AppFlix, that, uh, that I was unable to get these videos out, it's because I've been facing a number of tech issues with recording them. And imagine recording a 45 minute video and then there not being any sound. And that happened to me. And it wasn't because I connected it wrong, just the mic didn't work. Maybe the, the cord was blue, I, I don't know. And then today the video, when I exit out, it just doesn't save. So, and that happened as well, too, when I recorded a few. Uh, all right. This is just one of many uh, that I'll be recording uh, related to marketing Q&A. And for those of you that um, have not um, 
been here before or asked a question before, just go to Marketing Kitchen TV right here um, with uh, uh, at Marketing Kitchen TV. Use the hashtag as in this example right here, Q&A. Ask your question and I'll answer it right here. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video. That'll do it for this episode. I hope you found my answers useful. In the next episode of Marketing Kitchen TV Q&A Live, we'll pick up where we left off. I hope that we can have some engagement on this channel by you offering some comments. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Please like it and please share with your friends. It will really help the channel to grow, which in turn will help me and make this a better resource for us all. Thank you for your question. If you'd like me to answer a question here on Marketing Kitchen TV, all you need to do is go to the at Marketing Kitchen TV on Twitter, use the hashtag Q&A, and I will answer your questions here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, there's always fresh content simmering on our storytelling stovetop. So whatever happens in this kitchen shouldn't stay in this marketing kitchen. I'm Ron Vining, your host, reminding you to invite your family and friends to the next episode of Marketing Kitchen TV.